G'day you mob, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Pete vs Plants. I am Pete and the plants are in the box. So these are some Philodendron El Choco Reds. So I think it's Rubri Juvenile and some Philodendron Rugosum, which I think are pigskin Philodendron. So I think I should have a video up here somewhere with me taking these guys out. Did I do a video? I don't think I did. Maybe I didn't do a video. I also have my kids in that outside, so if there's a bit of noise pollution, sorry about that, but this is real life. But if you decide to come on the camera naked, Noah, I'm gonna have to blur things out. <laughs> my son's outside playing in the pool, in the nudie. You're a bit of a nudie Rudy, aren't ya? <laughs> you can go to the bathroom, you have to do a pee? A poo poo, okay, we'll be back in five. <laughs> come on, let's go. Can't you Rudy nudie? <laughs> See you later, Rudy Nudy. Don't forget to shut the door. Peaches will escape otherwise. You all good? Sweet, okay, and Christ's averted, and Bow's averted as well. No, well, yeah, anyway. So these have been sucking water like crazy, and I've had them in moss here for ages, but they have just been drying out oh, every day or two, so I think it is time to take them out of moss here. They are really sizing up and it's going to be time to pot them up and I think start considering selling these guys. So considering these guys are in moss and I'm going to have to get them out, I think what we're going to have to do is really thoroughly drench the moss. So I might, I might just put some water in here and then use that to do it so I can pull the moss off the roots. And the thing that has been annoying me a little bit about these guys is the inchworming thing that's going on. I keep the room here at about 70% humidity. So I don't know what the deal is, but one way or another they're having trouble and you can see this shoot. Ooh, looks a bit, um, yeah, definitely ready to be taken out of here and potted up to something more stable. Um, the shoot is pushing through the leaf itself. So yeah, it's an interesting situation. So I'm just going to completely drench these guys in water. They often, I don't think all of them, but some of them have holes at the bottom. In fact, I think all the plastic containers have holes at the bottom of the containers, whilst the glass ones don't. This one might not actually. All right. So yeah, well overdue getting these guys out. Oh no, this one does. There you go, down you go. So I'm just using the syringe to do this because it tends to be one of the easiest ways to get water into stuff. But yeah, I have not been giving these guys anywhere near enough attention recently, especially over the Christmas period. And then I'm getting sick recently as well, which was a, a bucket of laughs. Okay, Ruby Juven, oh no, not Ruby Juveniles. The, uh, these are the Rugosums. Uh, what am I doing? So I'm just saturating these. Hopefully the moss will come off easily. I guess we'll see how we go. I do have some of them in glass jars because again, I was sort of just trying to see when I first took these guys out of tissue culture, I wanted to see uh, glass jars gonna be better for keeping the moisture inside and holding onto it in the moss so that they don't dry out as quickly because that's that sort of battle that you have, especially when you start taking things out of tissue culture. It's that battle between how quickly they dry out and how long they stay moist and how moist and everything. And you kind of have to find that nice balance. Okay, if it does start getting a little too noisy in here and the kids do decide to come inside, I will probably just do a long time lapse and talk over the top for you guys. Um, but yeah, the plan is to just take everything out, remove the moss and then chuck them in either pond, which I have here cut with perlite. And I also have a soil mix that I made up before that is a sort of lighter, uh, smaller particle soil mix. I think it's about it's about 50 percent perlite, fifty percent soil and worm castings. And when I say perlite, I mean vermiculite perlite mix. So I've kind of roughly added in about that. Maybe it's slightly more. Could be about sixty percent um, perlite and vermiculite, and then the rest soil mix and castings. Okay. So what's the easiest way going to be to get these guys out? of the jars. I probably need a knife or something, maybe some tweezers. Butter knives. And the good thing is too, some of these are like triple planted. So 
I think when I did take these out of tissue culture, the number of plants was meant to be 10, but there were a whole bunch of extras, which is what happens quite often in the tissue culture process. You end up with a whole ton of extra X plants. You know, they, they end up sprouting off the bottom of other plants. And so like this one here had three on it. And so I'm just gonna pour out the excess water here. And so allowing them to grow out like this, I've actually got a few extras that I ended up plucking out of some of these when I took them out of the glass jars. And so I've just been sort of doing that and I think I've gotten about 12 out total so far. And I think this one looks like it's three. So that'll be really good to have another, well, yeah, another extra two that I'll be able to grow out. Though they are smaller than the main plant as you will see momentarily. So I'm gently doing this with a knife to just kind of coax it out of the jar because I don't want to pull the plant away from the roots. I've done that before when I've gotten a little too excited trying to get plants that are in moss out of a jar and the moss doesn't want to come out. Okay, so here's what we are looking at. So I think you can probably see that there are multiple plants in there and the roots are all around the bottom here. So I'm just going to try and gently pull away the perlite and moss. And so that's the mix that I use. It's about, probably about 30% perlite and 70% uh, moss when I take plants straight out of tissue culture and put them into, into a substrate. And you'll see there's actually four plants here. There's a very, very, very tiny one at the bottom, but um, yeah, I'm still sort of learning with all this, guys. I'm still trying to work out the ideal amount of time to have things sit in moss. To be honest with these guys, it has just been me not having time to take them out. But I probably should have as soon as they were taken out of uh, the sort of prop boxes because now it has just made life a lot harder um, with the moss just attached to these really delicate roots. Oh man, this is not gonna be fun. The other option is actually to get another bowl with water and use that to help get the moss off. Okay, so I think the kids are coming in, so I might chuck this on time-lapse for a bit. Okay, so the family's gone and we're still chugging along here. They have just gone out to go to the park. Hopefully burn some energy before tonight. I'll tell you what though guys, moss is definitely a massive pain in the butt if you are trying to transplant things out when they are still very, very small. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. Hopefully I haven't shocked the hell out of these plants, but I have a feeling there are gonna be a few of you viewers probably screaming at the screen. The only thing is I think that this moss has kind of sort of stunted them a little bit. I've left them in there too long. I probably should have just transplanted them moss with the moss or without it into soil or some other substrate much earlier. But again, as I said, I just didn't have time. So it is all a learning lesson. Worst case scenario though, the good thing is I know, I can kind of just chuck these guys in the aeroponics system and I think they would just grow new roots within a few weeks. So even if it were a total disaster and we lost most of these roots when transplanting these guys, I have a feeling they would probably all survive okay as long as they had a few weeks in the aeroponic system to sort of bounce back. And I might end up doing that depending on, yeah, where I think we're at once we get all these guys out. Okay, we do definitely have loads and loads and loads of duplicates here, so like, here, I'm just gonna see if I can pull these guys apart gently. Maybe not. The problem is that the roots do kind of grow in amongst, into sort of knots when they are so closely 
tied together and I don't want to break the roots. But I do want to separate them out. That's the only annoying bit. Okay. Can we do it? Come on, gently does it. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, I've just gotten, I think, three out of there, out of that single. So we're slowly working our way through. I think we've done about four or five of them so far. So I did the jar ones, they're all done, and now I'm just doing my little plastic cup ones, which tend to be a little easier. But I do feel like I am doing quite a bit of damage to these roots because it's just unavoidable. They're so fine that, yeah, I don't think there's any other way if you want to get this perlite and moss off without damaging them, unfortunately. But I guess we will see how we go. It's another one of those trade-offs. You could spend, you know, way more time trying to do this and not damage more roots or less time and cause more damage. And I'm the kind of person that's sort of a little more impatient than I am patient, unfortunately. That's just my style. So here's another good example. <laughs> Look at these tiny, tiny, tiny little X plants that have been sitting here. So I'll plant these up separately, I think, and we'll just have to see how they go. It'll be interesting if they survive and we can get something out of those as well. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling off quite a few of these roots, unfortunately. But this stuff is so knotted together. It's been in there for so long. that it is just a real pain in the butt. The water definitely helps. So for you guys who left me those comments in past videos telling me, use water to help get the moss off the roots, you are definitely right. It definitely does make life easier than when the moss is a little drier or bone dry <laughs> as it may be. This is another double. I think it could be that it's stemming from the base here. They look like they might be stemming out from the same place. So I think, oh no, there we go, separated them out. Can I keep the roots on that one? I can, boom and boom. So we're getting a whole bunch of plants here. The trick is gonna be seeing if we can keep them alive. Another two, sweet. All right, so I think we're done with the El Chocos. That is definitely a lot of root carnage. I think I've torn through a lot of them, unfortunately. So fingers crossed, we can keep them alive. Now let's get into the Ruby Ju, uh, keep calling him that, but Rugosum, Rugosum, Rugosum. So we'll get into these guys. These seem to have root systems that feel a little bit more robust, at least initially here. It'll be interesting to see how they go. Same sort of deal here. I look, it looks like we've got two plants in this one. And the story with how I got these, I purchased one and the person sent it to me, but it ended up <clears throat> having been sent really poorly. And it was loose inside the parcel, so it was just rolling around, dirt was everywhere, and the growth tip snapped off it. So I sent them a photo when I took it out of the package immediately and was just like, mate, I'm a little disappointed in your um, the way that you sent it. And... Uh, the person was kind enough to send me another one um, that was a, a doubler that we have here and package it really well. So, yeah, I appreciate when, when that sort of stuff happens and, you know, I, I'd like to think that's how I would behave under the same circumstances. Although you do see a lot of the time, you know, like I won't be held responsible for whatever happens during shipping. I think it's the kind of thing that if you have obviously not packaged it well at all, then you should probably either give them a refund or re replace the plant or something, right? So, yeah, it's glad that he did that. I mean, it's one thing if the parcel is, you know, squashed or something in transit, that's not something that they control, but they can control what happens when they're packing the plant in, right? And how well it's packed in. And if you just chuck it in the box and it's not stuck to the side very well, 
so that it's you know sort of nailed down and the soil is just allowed to sort of fall out of the pot everything like that then you know the plant's almost doomed from the get-go so i am not necessarily trying to get rid of all the moss like as much as i can but there is that diminishing returns kind of curve right where the more you try and get rid of the more damage you're going to end up doing to the roots so i think i'm getting rid of you know 95 percent of the moss but you'll still see that on all these plants there is still a substantial amount of little chunks of moss on the roots like that but you just do what you can right you have to sort of draw the line somewhere okay so there's that one we are almost done. I think we have one left. Good, another chunk of moss out. Boom, you're out. Shush. Last one. Okay. I think this is the one that had lost its tip originally. But I managed to sort of just grow it back. But yeah, it did lose like three leaves at the top, which was the majority of the plant. <laughs> so I ended up just chucking it in a box and was like, good luck to you, mate. Fingers crossed. So the reason that you want to remove as much of the moss as possible too is that once you put it into another substrate and you are going to water it on a sort of different regime that keeps that substrate hydrated, if you end up with a heap of moss around the roots, you can end up with root rot because obviously that moss can end up a hell of a lot more damp than say the surrounding substrate. So I think that is, that's a big key component to, especially with passive hydro, why it's a good idea to remove, you know, the majority, if not all, you know, of the other substrate that is on or around the plant's roots prior to putting it into passive hydro because, yeah, obviously passive hydro is going to have effectively access to that water 100% of the time. And if you've got moss there, that moss is just going to be perpetually saturated. Okay, so I might clean up all this crap and come back and we will start working out what to do with these plants, whether we'll pot all of them up or we will need to chuck some of these El Chocos into a, an aeroponics unit to sort of revitalize them a little bit and grow some roots back. All right, so I did a potting up video of some of my strangest plants, which I'll link above. Hopefully that came out before this one. Um, if not, you'll just have to rewatch this and try and click on it later. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I ended up with a whole bunch of these smaller pots, which I think should be just fine for the size of these root balls, especially after the destruction that I just rained down upon them. And I should have heaps here, I've got loads. The other thing is I have some cups like this that I will put passive hydro into. And uh, well, that's got a hole in the bottom of it. So I can put soil in that one if I want. And then I also can reuse these if I give them a clean. Um, and I usually try and sort of keep my eggs in multiple baskets, right? I don't have all my eggs in the same basket with substrates just in case one plant prefers one over the other, or, you know, it's just good to sort of spread things out a little bit and see how you go, as opposed to just chuck everything in exactly the same uh, situation and under the same conditions, because, you know, if, if it's shit for one of them, it's probably shit for all of them. So I guess what we will do is we will chuck one of these big guys, these rugosums, rugosums, rugosum sounds right to me. I think, let's maybe look at the root systems, try and work out which one has the cleanest root system. Because I think that is the one that I will chuck into passive hydro, although they're all pretty clean on these. Just trying to get rid of any other little bits of moss that I can see that are easily removed. I think this one is probably sweet to go in. So what I'm gonna do is just scoop up some pond to create a reservoir at the bottom. I usually try and make sure that the roots get to one of the sides of the containers, if not multiple sides, so that I can see what is going on and just double check and make sure that those roots aren't rotting. So I guess we will just, what can I use? Use another cup to just pour away and fill this guy up. Up. 
but yeah, and this pond is bone dry. So this is gonna be interesting to see how it goes, but fingers crossed the plant absolutely loves pond. So I will, I guess we'll just put some water in it now. So I have filled up to about here where the roots were. I'm expecting though, because it's so dry that this will drop rapidly over the next day or two. So I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on that. Uh, we might do a similar thing whilst we've got the pond here for one of these, oof, this one looks like it might be a winner. One of these El Choco Reds. I wonder if we use this one. This is a pretty large one looking good though. Hopefully the amount of moss that's on here isn't excessive. You guys will have to let me know if I'm still leaving too much on because you know, when people say you need to remove all or as much as possible, it's kind of like at what point do you kind of quit and say, okay, that's about as much as I can get off without doing too much more damage to the root systems or system rather. So I feel like I just especially have sort of fat fingers with these nice, fine little roots. So I guess it's all just a learning experience, right guys? Come off. All right. This one has a really nice root system still. It's done very well. All right, I think I'm gonna call that a day. Hopefully that's okay. Again, you guys let me know if I am making a fool of myself. All right, so again, I'm just gonna sort of push these roots around, try and get them sort of to the side a little bit so I can keep an eye on things. I will sink the base down. Uh, I'll do it to about there, I think. And yeah, time to pond it up, I guess. We've got it about three or four centimeters off the bottom here. Again, I will just keep an eye on it and make sure that it has a decent reservoir over the next few days because I'm expecting it to slowly diminish. And should we chuck another two in pond just for kicks, just for shits and giggles? Hopefully we've got enough pond here or else I'll have to go get some more. Maybe we'll do at least one more of these El Chocos. Let's see if I can try and find one that has a relatively large but clean root system. Otherwise I'm gonna have to get back in there and keep cleaning away. Hopefully we'll try this one, but I'm gonna have to get back in here because there's quite a bit of moss still here. I wonder too, if you're unable to get a lot of the moss off the roots, something that you might wanna try is just using a chunkier than normal mix. So, you know, if you have this finer mix that you would use for seedlings, and you're sort of like, oh, I can't get much of this moss off. Something that you might want to try is to just use a chunky mix because it's going to dry out faster and it probably, you know, will sort of counteract the moss that's holding in a bit of the moisture close to the roots. But again, I'm just thinking out loud. You guys will have to let me know, again, if you have any experience doing any of this sort of stuff or your own feedback because I learned so much from your comments so I do really really appreciate when you guys chime up and say no Pete that's that's dumb as don't do that try this instead this is what's worked for me uh, it makes it makes my learning kind of supercharged because it means I can kind of skip all of the mistakes <laughs> you know all the dumb stuff that I'm doing or I can counteract it sometimes you guys are like oh my god you just did this in the video, don't do that. And I'll be like, oh, okay, and go get the plants and fix it. So I do appreciate it. All right, I think this is about as good as I'm gonna get this one because I'm just pulling off roots and I don't wanna do that. Coming off. All right, another reservoir. At the bottom there. Chuck you in to about there and Okay. Mm -hmm. 
water again. Okay, so I think that is all that that pond is going to allow for now. The next step is going to be soiling up these guys, if that is a, a verb. So hopefully these guys survive okay in this light, airy mix. I haven't made this before, I just kind of winged it and chucked some vermiculite in there for the first time, just wanting a bit of a bit of variety, a bit of variety. And I've heard good things. So it's almost impossible to not make a mess when you're potting up really small stuff, I've found. <laughs> Yeah, as hard as you might try to avoid it. Embrace the mess, guys. Okay, and I might save watering these guys until the very end. But I'm hoping they do really well. I'll just have to keep an eye on hydration for these guys because yeah, if they dry out, they are going to have a bad time and they may dry out quickly too, which might be the, the main problem. Okay, get this little tiddler in there. Just your leaves don't really help me to position you easily. Okay, so the rugosum's done. Now, I guess we will just go through these one by one and kind of have a look at the root systems. And yeah, hope that they are sufficient enough to hold on. See, we have things like this, so I'm not 100% sure. Worst case scenario, I can watch for the leaves to drop off, and if they start dropping off, what you can do, even if you lose all the roots, you can potentially transfer them to semi-hydro, to passive hydro, and they do okay. I'm just gonna remove this leaf at the bottom here. Or chuck them into the aeroponic system, as I've mentioned. Sorry, I'm gonna have to stand up to do this. Just makes my life a little easier. So I probably need to do a video on that at some point, but my kind of steps when trying to rescue a plant, right? So if you find that it has root rot, what do you do is the first sort of step. And if that fails, what do you do after that? If that fails, what do you do after that? Because you can sort of go all the way back to a wet stick, right? The ultimate last stop is really just a leafless wet stick, rootless, you know, has nothing on it. So yeah, and I've found myself there a few times now quite a few times to be honest. Um, and the aeroponic system seems to be the saving grace, the thing that you can just chuck anything in and it will pretty much keep it going. It'll keep it alive. So yeah, I definitely recommend, <laughs> as I always say guys, if you don't have one, get one because they have changed the way that I propagate and the way that I save plants. I think I was telling you about my, um, my accident killing, killing off my philodendron patricias recently and I ended up chucking two of them, the two that survived, I ended up having three. I had two that I bought but one was double planted and I think I saved the one that was double planted. I put them both in the aeroponics unit and they both survived. So even though a whole bunch of leaves rotted off, the roots rotted off, everything had rotted off, it was just a chunk with effectively a leaf on it on each of them and one of them was tiny. I put them in the aeroponics unit because of the high humidity, the nutrients, the air mix ratio to water. They're already growing roots like this within a few weeks. So it's just astonishing, guys. I really do recommend getting your hands on one of those if you can. Oh, we got another one, another little tiddler here. Look at that, see if we can, it'll be interesting to see how we go with these. All right, can I take off these bottom leaves that are gonna be buried because they're going to just rot off anyway and turn into food for fungus gnats. I'm not sure if these are too shallow. Another thing I could do is hedge my bets based on pot size. I'm just gonna put some holes in the bottom of this one and the sides as well. So get a bit more drainage. I really like these. I just get these from, uh, my wife gets shakes from a takeaway store that we go to sometimes. And I'm just always taking these plastic cups to try and reuse. And these tend to be a really good size. So yeah, definitely don't be ashamed to stock up on that sort of stuff. 
I just, I love being able to reuse plastic wherever possible, to be honest. I mean, I know that it doesn't look amazing, but I just feel a lot better <laughs> if I can recycle and give things a second life. Okay. Okay, cool. It's looking good. This is the weird one that had that stem pushing through the leaf. I don't know what the deal is. I think I might have to um, give it a helping hand, unfortunately. And this is the annoying thing. Some of these is, have ended up beautiful looking, beautiful looking, but others not so much. And so I'm constantly thinking, oh, do I try and sell these whilst they're ugly? Or do I keep, you know, holding on to them and only selling them when they're really pretty because that's what I would like. And it would, you know, you would assume it would probably fetch a higher price if it's looking, if it's looking really good. No one wants to buy an ugly duckling, right? At least very few of us. Although to be honest, I kind of keep an eye out for them just to get good, decent deals on plants that would otherwise, otherwise be really expensive. So, yeah. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're making some headspace. Headspace, head, some room. Did I just pick up one of the smaller ones? No. Okay, take you off. Take you off. All these leaves around the base are just useless, so, and they're tiny. Really don't want them just rotting under the soil. Could introduce root rot, but it could also just attract fungus gnats and feed the pests, which I don't particularly want. Now that I finally have my fungus gnat infestation under control. God, moss, as good as it is, I tell you what, it can be such a pain in the ass at the same time. Bloody moss. All right, so I'm gonna do a similar thing here. Um, definitely be careful if you do this like I do, because sometimes the plastic gives away really quickly and you could end up slicing your hand. I always laugh when I say that because I'm thinking, oh my God, am I about to do that on camera? I think the family's back and the party's over guys so I'm just going to keep doing this and we'll hopefully try and sum up at the end with as little noise in the background as possible. <laughs> okay guys so to show you where everything ended up I have chucked the larger pots here, so the stuff in pond, as well as two of the soil ones and a bunch of the smaller plants that I chucked into soil as well. I've chucked them into a container here. Now I've chucked them in a container to give them 100% humidity because I think their root systems are obviously going to have been damaged quite a bit. I think they're going to be in shock. They may not be able to hold on to as many leaves if they are losing a lot of water really, really, really quickly. So I think this is gonna help them sort of recover from that. And then hopefully once their root system's established, I'll take them back out. And um, yeah, hopefully they'll be going okay. Now the other ones are up over here. So I have chucked them up in a little seedling dome that I got from Bunnings up here, but we have pretty much all of the other uh, El Chocos and I think two rugosums, rug rugosums, rugosums in there as well. So again, same thing, I'm just leaving them in here to hopefully get over the shock of having their roots disrupted and uh, damaged. So that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out this one next and I will see you there. Ciao, ciao.